So I'm going to do another video on lifting territories. It's not going to be a video on lifting like an actual car, it's just going to be going over all the different parts you can use and the pros and cons of things, what you need once you go to certain heights, like the extra parts you need. And it's the most common question I get asked is how do I lift the territory, how much is it going to cost and all of that. So I'm going to go share all the knowledge I have when my phone stops and some of the stuff, like, it's just been trial and error for me because you have a few beers and come up with ideas of mates and then try it and it doesn't work or it does work and then you can make it better or something else. So I'm going to go over it all. I'll start with the rear springs and... So springs, so we've tried a few different springs over time. We've test fitted all these into Tyler's car. We measured from the bottom of the rim to the top of the fender. I'll put a picture in of where we measured. And we've got some different things. So we've got standard territory springs. And these ones are a bit sagged. We had a newer set as well. We put them in, we got eight mil difference between standard territory sagged and standard territory new. So there was eight mil difference in height, just putting them in. And then we tried the raised king springs. We've done this all on the back of a beer carton. Done raised king springs, and they gave us 15 mil lift over a new territory spring, or 23 mil over the sag one. So you got 23 mil from a SAG territory spring by putting the raised king springs in. Then I also tried a lifted HQ spring, but due to the spring rates, like it looks taller, but due to spring rates, it actually sagged. I think more coils makes it a softer spring. So it sagged, it actually lowered the car by about five mil. And then the next one we tried, I haven't actually got that spring here, but we tried a stock trailblazer spring and that gave us 675 mil right in between like the sagged and the new territory spring and then we tried raised so there the raised trailblazer springs in Tyler's car they end up giving us more lift than this by 10 mil so they end up giving us 10 more li mil lift than what a raised king spring would and they're a softer spring now i had brought springs like i think this is from a prada but the bottoms like different you got to have that same sort of tighter coil at the top and bottom because it doesn't fit like it doesn't fit nicely into the cradle so that didn't work so if you're looking for lifted springs there's the raised springs they'll give you i'm going to say 20 mil every car i've lifted they give me 20 mil there's companies on ebay that are saying they give you 40 mil it, it's a lie they, they don't give you anywhere near 40 mil and I messaged all the different people that had those listings up and it was the same person that messaged me back from all those different sellers and they all said, oh, it's approximate. And then when I turned around and said, well, I got an email from Kings saying that they advertise a maximum of 30 mil, I never got a response from them after that. They had King Springs themselves state 30 mil. I got an email from them. I put that up there. There's probably other springs you can try, but as I say, it's that tighter top and bottom coil and spring rates that always seem to catch us out because they got to set. So this is the cradle, obviously, upside down, just for this video. We've got a couple of standard spring seats. So they sit like that. My old control arm, doing this one hand, sorry. So they normally sit in like that. But of course, other way around, wheels out here. So, these other springs do fit in, but like I say, spring rates make a difference. So if you're looking for raised springs, raised trailblazer will give you more lift than a raised king spring for the territory. So I'm gonna butt in here. I made this other video on all the different lift parts. And I said the trailblazer springs gave us more lift, which to start with they did, they gave us more lift than the king springs. But over time, with the car being loaded up, they end up sagging and sort of, once we put extra spaces in, they sort of bowed out as well. Yeah, ballooned out sideways. So they, yeah, they ballooned out sideways where the Kings don't. So they didn't end up giving us any extra lift to the Kings other than the fact that these were a softer spring, but they wouldn't be suited like, that's a seven seater. So once you load that up with people and yeah. luggage and so forth, these would actually sag too much. So 
These are the comfort ones. They do make a HD one, but we just couldn't find them available. So I'd like to try the HD ones, but for now, I hate to say this, but yeah, I'll go back to the King Springs. Probably been better for the simple fact that they're just that stiffer spring and they still only give you that 20 mil at the most lift. So that's a factory rubber spring seat. Sits in there, also sits in the arm. That's what the springs sit in. Now these ones are actually in pretty good condition. Some of the ones I've seen, they're just rubbed out down to bare metal. And I think, I think it's about $40 for Jefferson Forks for another set of them. So they only come in pairs always and you need a pair for each side. Now, Super Pro are the other ones that make the raised one. So you can see how it's 10 mil raised. And then there's, well, this is a Nola thing. This is just their standard replacement, so it's a lot thinner. And then your standard rubber ones probably pretty thin too. These ones might actually be a little bit thicker. But they sit in there. There's actually a locating tab. There's a little slot there, and there's that little tab there. So they've got to locate into that now. So the 10 mil space on the top, well, that'll be the top and the bottom, gives you an extra 20 mil. When we've done our bear cart and science the other day and put them in and tested them, they do give you exactly 20 mil more lift. I come across the HQ springs and I thought, one of they'll fit. I actually didn't search to see if they made seats. So they make insulator seats for the HQ coils, and they're actually the same diameter as the territory springs, like standard spring. So you could use these as well. Now these are rubber, and if you compare them, they're not quite as high as the Super Pro, but they're definitely higher than standard, and these are 35 bucks for a pair. So it's $35 a pair, $155 a pair. I think these are $50 a pair. So these are definitely a lot cheaper. If you're just looking for a little bit of extra lift, they fit into the cradle, they fit into the spring, go like that, and the lower control arm. So they fit in like that. So they will give you an easy, cheap, extra 10 mil of lift in the rear. Now the other way is like I've done in the other video, you can get Polypro Jeep Spacers. I'll put the actual model up. You can get them in 15 and 30. Now what I do is, you put them on the lower arm, and then you can add the Super Pro one on top. Now because you're coming up higher, there's not much stopping the bush from just slipping off, especially with a spring in it. So this is where I say, you gotta add that extra pipe in. This one in. Have to do one in. And then the super row space fits over there, or you can go 30 mil one. Now this is in that other video I done. That pipe welded in there will stop it slipping off. So currently my setup is that on the bottom, 30 mil G spacer, 10 mil super pro, then it's 15 mil G speaker spacer, 10 mil super pro, and a raised king spring. So that's my lift in the rear. So I'll get into what I state is basic lift, which to me basic lift, which you don't need a lot of other parts, is a raised spring and super row top and bottom. So that to me is a basic lift. It'll give you about 35 mil of actual suspension lift. And then with that, you don't really need extended brake lines, extended shocks, or camber arms. Your camber might still need a bush or something to fix the camber because as you lift the territory the top of the wheel actually comes out so it's like that so to fix the camber you might have to get an offset bush or see how you go it's not too bad if you're just running this but once you start adding the extra spaces on, then you're going to start to need things like extended shocks so i use navarro shocks with some little adapters I make and some piping to make up the different sizes and the bolts. I've got those kits that I've still got to make more of and if people need them just send me a message. And then where is it? The, I use adjustable camber arms. So this is a old set 
everyone knows if you watch my videos the dramas i have with camera so this is a poly pro one i don't use these anymore because the bush still stretched but i take the standard arms strengthen them up because they bend on me but you might need to look at something like that well you will need something like that or offset bushes or something if you're going to lift it extra so if you're putting a whole heap of extra lift in you need to look at that extended shocks and i find like even with your blade arm it starts to pull your whole arm forward like this when you lift it so i actually drop my blade arm mounts as well to bring it back a little back into alignment now my toe arms are also an issue i've run out of adjustment on them so i've actually got super pro bushes i don't know if i've got them right here no nah. super pro actually make an offset bush that you can press into the arm so i'm going to press that into the arm so then i can use the standard cam bolt to adjust my toe properly so that's what I like. that's basic once you go above that you're going to start to need a whole heap of parts extended brake lines camber arms blade arm adjustments toe arms like it starts to get more and more complicated and I've, i know guys that run the extra 30 mil spacer and they haven't got all those parts in there yet but they're still driving around but it's not aligned properly um i think daniel's one of them i've got to put camber arms and extended brake lines in his just to fix that probably don't need to do the other stuff if you don't really want to but camber arms and or camber bushes and brake lines are a must if you start lifting it more so moving on to the front all different parts you need for the front but we'll go over the different shocks first so sx and early sy had this type of shock in it so it's got the lower fork this is for the all-wheel drives obviously and then it's got the long spring because it's got the lower spring seat on the shock and then you got the later sy and the sy2 so the shocks are over all the same length but they've run a shorter spring and raised the spring seat it's all the same forks on the bottom i'm not 100 percent sure why they've done this i know on mine on full drop my sway bar top spray bar link would clash on this so i don't know if that had something to do with it and then you move on to the sz so they've got the same like same length spring but the springs are actually different this one's got an extra coil so it's softer this one doesn't so it's probably a stiffer spring um don't know if that's something to do with the diesel motor in different weights to the barrow it could be but the seats are still the same height now the advantage of, or the best thing about SZ shocks is the lower fork, because it's actually a shorter shock. This lower fork is about 23 mil longer than these ones, than your older models. So easy way to get some, some lift is to get an SZ lower fork, unbolt it, and bolt it to the older model, like SX, SY, SY2 shocks. And that's gonna give you 23 mil of lift just by putting that fork onto these shocks. So if you have either of them, change it over, there's 20, 25 mil say, of lift, straight up. Cheaper than King Springs. If you're looking for someone, DJ's auto dismantling, he's here in Melbourne. I get these ones from him, like you can see the two spring, like the difference there in height. So it's a lot longer, but he has them in stock, I'm pretty sure still, give him a buzz. You can help you out with those. Now, there's another way to lift them, which is the raised spring. So I actually took my raised spring out of the front of mine because I was running this style shock and I took the raised spring out because it was just too stiff. Off-road on the tracks, you just jolted and it felt like the front of the car was gonna get ripped out. So just, king springs are just too stiff and they put too much pressure on the shocks as well. So you got less travel with them. So I went back to, I've actually got an SZ spring on an SY2 shock with the SZ lower fork. So that's what I've currently got in my car. These springs on this shock, this fork on this shock, if that makes sense to anyone. Now another way, if you're not gonna go the race springs and you need a little bit extra lift, they do make these. So these, you're take your spring off and then you fit this first and it raises the spring seat. So you can get these in 10 mil, they're super pro. You get them in 10 mil or 20 mil. 
But again, by doing this, you're gonna make your ride stiffer. Like you're gonna get some extra height out of it because you're pushing the shock down, but you're increasing your stiffness of your spring at the same time. And you're making it harder for the shock to close. So you're gonna get probably less travel. But that is another way if you're looking for something that I know of. Now, next you have bolt-on spacers. So I've got there's 35 mil and there's a 60 mil. And then you've got slip-on spacers. So if we were to take this over here, that's your spring top, your top seat. So move this stuff over. So your slip-on ones are easy, you just pull the shock out Slip the six mil spacer on. So that's gonna give you a cheap little bit of lift. Or you can run the bolt-on spacers. So that's how they come, just like that. Now these are for a Prado 120, but they fit the territory as well, and Falcons. Now these nuts are different thread pitch, so they won't work. I've never found any that work. So you're gonna to have to get different size nuts. Pick up the nuts and the sockets. Now, the issues I've found with these is say you got a normal size nut, just a normal type of nut, you get that on, you can't get a socket on. So you can't use just your standard nut. So you're gonna have to go to Bunnings, sells them. I'll put the picture or link up for that. And you're gonna get flange nuts. So the flange nut goes on. And then that takes, it uses a smaller socket to do it up. So you can actually get the socket on. Now the other issue with these is, they go into the car a certain way, they've got to be a certain degrees. I'll put the chart up. It's about 10 degrees. Like if you're looking at the shock, that's the center of it. You can see how that one's about 10 degrees off. And these ones, like, if you put the bolt on spaces on, it changes where the studs are. That's the studs that go to in. So you actually have to rotate it back to alignment. Now, as you can see, if you were to try and turn that right now, you haven't got a hope in hell. So you can use the normal type of spring compressors with this, because you're not actually unbolting. So you just got to relieve a bit of the pressure. Don't unbolt the top. So just relieve a bit of the pressure so that you can then flip this one upside down. See the rubber? You got to spin the rubber. So spray some WD-40 or inox or anything in there to help make it spin. So take the pressure off, and then you gotta slowly spin it back into that same alignment, the 10, 10 degrees off or 10 mil, yeah, I'll put the diagram up. So that's the issue with fitting the bolt-on ones. But other than that, they're great to put on. They give cheap lift. These are like $58 for so 35 mils. So that's another thing, if you're gonna run the raised king springs and the super pro bushes in the back. You don't want to rain raised king springs in the front because they're just too stiff. Just buy a 35 mil bolt on. That's that's gonna level with that'll level your car out. 35 mil in the front plus the king springs and stuff in the back. That should give you a nice level car. If it doesn't, you can get 25 mil ones. Now I'll put up a poach picture. There is actually one like you type in Prado 120 into Google or eBay, it'll come up with all the different spaces and thicknesses. Be careful because some say we'll give you approximately 50 mil lift, but it'll only be a 30 mil spacer. So make sure you check, you actually want to check what size the spacer is. And then there's one other company on there that sells them. They probably work for the Prada, but they don't work for the territory. And they don't have like, it's not open here, it's closed. I'll put the picture up and I've had them and they don't fit like the holes and stud patterns seem to be slightly different too. So they're no good. I'll put them up, stay away from them. But that's pretty much, that's all I've got for the front. But the other issues I have now is, so I run 60 mil. So like I said, I've got 60 mil bolt on spacer. I've got SZ springs on an SY2 shock and I've got SZ forks on there. So I've got 60 mil, a spacer here and I've got another 23 mil down there. So that's the lift I've got in the front. And that actually ends up being more by the time you get it out to the wheel. And 
that's good but the problem I have now too is my so that's your normal upper arm bracket mounted in and you've got your top control arm that sits in there now at the moment because mine's lifted so much my arm sits down like that and that ball joint's on a big angle so I've got KMAC Aero adjustable mounts at the moment I'm actually going to change them and go back to a standard but I'm going to flip the standard one so the mounts are down lower and then I've got to redrill the holes back further so the arm will sit back in further but then it's going to sit more level because the more you lift it the more it cranks down and then the bad that's a bad ball joint angle so that's one issue I've got to fix in the front of mine still and then the other is steering so I've actually got a knuckle down no, that's a rear knuckle I haven't got a front knuckle but you stand the steering arm bolts in under like that goes up into the knuckle now again because I've lifted it it's on a massive angle like this and the problems I get is if I'm going over a bump because it goes like that it actually pushes the wheels out so I get bad bumps there so this is actually an AU Falcon steering rod uh, what do you call this rack end and then I've got a universal end for this which is a rose jointed end you can't see it under the boot and what I'm going to do is actually flip them so it'll be on the top of the knuckle so the steering arm will actually be straighter and then I won't get bad bump steer when I go over bumps but this is something else I've still got to fix and work on but it pretty much sums up everything I know about the lifting and like as I say me bolting all this extra big thick stuff on and all those extra spaces in the rear it just opens up more issues so like I always say if people message me you can keep it simple once you start going past that it starts to get expensive because you need all this sort of extra stuff like these are nearly a hundred bucks each delivered and then they're 20 bucks and then you've got high tensile bolts and having to do custom work like this like the more you want in height the more it's going to cost you and it, the price goes up quite a lot once you go past that standard height so to keep it cheaper in the front just go your longer forks or your 35 mil bolt on and if the longer forks aren't enough stick a just a flat space on top it's yeah prado 120 is what you want to search for your spaces <laughs> 